In this short video, I'll show you how we can use Corpora to select the words and phrases we want to teach to our learners and how we might present these words and phrases in context. First, you'll need to create an account for EnglishCorpora.org. This is free and uh, will just take you a minute. I've already created my account and I'm already logged in. Once you're logged in, Click on Corpora Overview. Today we're going to work with the COCA, which is the Corpus of Contemporary American English. It's a fairly large corpus with one billion words of American English and contains lots of recent English because it was compiled with materials from 1990 to 2019. It's also what we call a balanced corpus because it includes a wide range of different genres such as newspaper writing, blogs, movies, and so on and so forth. Click on the COCA to reach its homepage. Now the COCA is special on this particular interface because it includes a number of functions that can be particularly useful for language teaching and learning. And today we're going to look at the analyze text function, which you can access via this icon. Here you can copy and paste uh, any text that you uh, would like, for instance, to introduce your uh, students to. Uh, you simply um, copy and paste it in, or if you've already uh, done that before, and I already have, I have pasted in a chapter of a book that I would like my students to read, and I can click on the tick to reuse this particular text, so it's been saved on my personal account. And then I'll click on search. Now this is a fairly long text, so it takes a while. But here we are. What we can see is that the text has now been highlighted in various colours and the words in sign blue are among the most frequent words in English, so um, among the top 500 most frequent words. And you can see that in this text, which is um, an introduction text um, but still academic English, 44% of the words belong to these most frequent 500 words in general English. And then 12% um, are in green and these are mid-frequency words. And then there are 22% of words in this uh, particular text which are um, infrequent words, low frequency, and these are words that we can see here like lexical item and communicative classroom. These are low frequency words compared to um, the corpus of contemporary American English. So I've said a corpus its balance includes a wide range of different texts. On this side of the page, uh, we have these words listed according to frequency in this particular text. So we can see that the most frequent high frequency word in this text is actually end, which occurs 109 times. And the second most frequent is the, which in occurs 97 times. Um, among the mid-frequency words um, we have um, eg which stands for example of course, then we have language, patterns, items, specific expressions, so we can already guess that this was a chapter about language uh, learning and in particular a learning of patterns and um, expressions, vocabulary and so on and so forth. We can then see uh, with the low frequency word uh, in more detail what the chapter is about. So the most frequent item is 34 among low frequency words, uh, lexical. Then we have also um, CF, which is obviously academic language, um, C also. Learners, um, that also occurs 22 times. And then chunks and grammar occur 17 times. So again, this list gives you um, a good idea of the kind of topics that are dealt with in the text that you've um, analyzed. Now, I'd like to focus on a couple of words um, that we might like to introduce our learners to. So the first one is going to be distinction, which we can see here. In this particular chapter, it uh, is used in the context of a collocation, adjective plus noun, clear-cut distinction. But let's look at distinction for now. I've clicked on the word and I've been directed to this page, which is a sort of a summary page about the word distinction, 
we can see uh, how frequent it is across the different genres of the COCA corpus. So here we see that distinction is most frequent in academic English and uh, hardly occurs in TV and movie language, which doesn't come as much of a surprise. We can also check its pronunciation over here. Uh, we have some synonyms and uh, in particular we have collocates and that's what we're going to look at in more detail. So collocates, verb collocates to do with distinction would be make, draw, blur for instance. So to make a distinction, to draw a distinction, to blur a distinction. These are very strong verb collocates of distinction and these are some of the collocations that you might want to teach your learners. We can also have a look at adjectives that collocate with distinction and here uh, the most uh, the strongest associations are important distinction, clear distinction, dubious, sharp, crucial, subtle and so on and so forth. We can find out more about these collocates if we click on the more here and here we have um, a detailed word sketch of uh, the noun distinction. Um, so we can see again the adjectives over here, important, clear, dubious, these are the ones that we had but we now have many more that we may want to examine. We have here the verbs, uh, again make, draw, blur, earn and over here adverbs. Now let's go back to the home page of the word distinction and let's scroll down to find out more about the context um, in which distinction might be used. And what this interface does very nicely is provide us with a list of concordance lines which are highlighted uh, according to the various patterns that we might find. And so we find uh, to make distinctions among different categories for instance. And here we have a number of important patterns that we might want to introduce our students to. Another pattern that is easy to observe here is distinction between something and something. Um, so we have lots of distinction between. Uh, we may want to um, scroll through these lines to find out um, more of these potentially relevant patterns. We can go back to the main text by uh, clicking on analyze text and I'd like to um, show you another word that might be of interest. Let's go for a verb this time around. So I'm going to click on refer and now I'm directed to the page about the verb refer and we can see that refer also occurs very frequently in academic English but also in blogs, in web language and spoken language and so on to a lesser extent but still um, it's more frequent in a variety of genres as the word distinction. Now if we look at some of the collocates, some of them are rather odd. So we have Obama, we have the US, John and Jesus and uh, we might uh, ask ourselves why that's the case. This is to do with the data that's gone into um, the COCA corpus and it just goes to show that as teachers, as researchers, we always need to be very careful about um, the database that's behind such an analysis and in this case we'll need to make some careful decisions as to which collocates we want to teach in reference to refer, so what is actually relevant for learners um, if they are to use this particular word. And what I would argue is probably most important with a verb like refer is that they know the kind of syntactic patterns, the kind of grammatical patterns that refer occurs in. And we can see that with the clusters um, which are over here, but it's probably easiest uh, to go to these concordance lines um, at the bottom of the page which have um, these uh, highlighted patterns already. So one that's fairly obvious is that we have refer to something as a very frequent pattern. But we also within that see we have referred to as as another important um, chunk that we may want to look at. We can find out more about these um, clusters of words by clicking on clusters over here. Uh, we have uh, some patterns that involve an adverb and refer, so often referred or commonly referred, sometimes referred, not referred. 
but we also have uh, what we already spotted in the corns line referred to as, um, referred to in, referred to by, um, so a number of important chunks that we may want to um, teach students. If we're interested to find out exactly how this is used, um, then we just click on that particular chunk and then we're taken to uh, concordance lines and you can see we have here some concordance lines from web language, from blogs and if we scroll down we'll find from other genres. We can take a random sample to make sure that we have a good overview. Okay, so that was just a very quick overview of some of the things you can do with the analyze text function and then uh, the word function in the COCA on english-corpora.org. I hope that was helpful and if you want to find out more, you might uh, find it helpful to have a look at this ebook, which was co-written with students from Osnabrück University and in particular in chapter 5, uh, which works with EnglishCorpora.org and in the options and further ideas, uh, you will find that there are instructions on how to use this text analysis function and how to make um, more uses of this particular word of function that we have in the latest version of the COCA. Um, so it's all detailed out there and I hope that it will be useful.